जय हिंद एवरी वन इन द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट टुडे आई एल गोइंग टू टीच यू रिगार्डिंग द क्रिटिकल पाथ मेथड इट इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन द टर्म्स ऑफ द सॉफ्टवेयर प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट सो द टॉपिक आई डिक्लेयर ऑलरेडी दैट इज द क्रिटिकल पाथ मेथड सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट अ क्रिटिकल पाथ मेथड यू कैन थिंक अबाउट इट इज बेसिकली अ बेस लाइन फॉर द प्रोजेक्ट प्रिपरेशन थिंक अबाउट दैट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू प्रिपेयर अ सैंडविच फॉर द सैंडविच वॉट यू नीड यू द बेस लाइन इज यू नीड अ ब्रेड यू नीड द चीज you need the vegetables isn't it so for preparing the whole soul completing the project prepare a sandwich you need all these ingredients but what happen if you are not having the bread then what will happen you are not able to complete the project the bread is the baseline for your project isn't it that means it's a constraint of your project so critical path is basically in terms of this uh, the preparation of a bread or the sandwich but it is having a basically certain constraint following all these in a broader way is the critical path method that means the completion of your project so what is critical path method if i talk about the definition it says that a critical path in a project management is the longest sequence of activities that must be finished on time in order for the entire project to the to complete the project for example if i have to complete the project in a certain modules i will divide the project in certain tasks in certain modules and i'll assign certain durations for completing all the modules so critical path what identifies is that it identifies the whole soul duration of completing the all the modules one by one talking about the second definition for that the critical path method is a technique where you identify tasks that are necessary for project completion and determining the scheduling flexibilities so i defined the example of a sandwich making the task completion is that i'll put the cheese on the bread i'll put the veggies on the bread then i'll have the binding of that uh, uh, the sandwich so the whole soul process what duration it is taking what time completion it is taking that is basically the critical path method so regarding the more detailing about that thing it says that any delays in the critical task will delay the rest of the project so each and every activity should be complete in a specific time duration if one activity will get, will get reduced then what will happen the whole project will get in a reduced phase so talking about the further how i can identify the critical part that is a very very important question you can uh, what you can do is that first of all after the analysis of your project after the analysis of what is happening in your project you have to basically break your project in certain certain different modules that is which is called your work breakdown structure as the name declares the work breakdown structure it says that to list all the project activities or task required to produce the deliverables the list of the activities in the work breakdown structure serves as the foundation for the rest of the cpm so as a diagrammatic representation is defining here we are having the project name presenting here we are having the different phases in that project in that phases we are having the certain categorization of furthering that modules that is the task 1 task 2 task 3 similarly the phase 2 is having certain more modules task 1 task 2 task 3 so if you are having a big project and you are having the different different small small modules then definitely the project completion will make be easier and you can say the complexity of the project will get reduced by completing the small small parts and at the end of the project you can integrate the project completely fine for example we can have how the breakage of that how the work breakdown structure works we can take an example for that let's say the marketing team is uh, producing a new interactive blog post here are some tasks that might be in the work breakdown structure so the first task id says that the first task is your a and it says that it will create the outline of the task so what we have to do we have to create the outline what we have to what what should be happen in that project what is happening in that project we have to give the detailing of that project getting my point so the duration for that we have given is the one day in the one day we'll have the whole analysis we will have the whole uh, project understanding of that and we'll have the certain creating the outline for that project fine in the second task is the b task which is saying that we have to write the draft of that project uh, the first we have done the analysis we have identified what we have to do in that project now we have to give a complete draft to that project that means a whole soul outlining in terms of the drafting in terms of the writing or the documentation of that project so for that we have given the duration that is your 5 days similarly the th the third task is the c that is edit and create the final draft we have done we have given the drafting of the whole uh, soul document of our project then after that we will do the analysis we'll do the, the for revision of that draft that what amendments we can do in that or whatever changes we want to do in that project and after that amendments we will have the finalization of this task that is we had given the two days to that task then the, then the fourth one is a d task it says that design post visuals of course the designing 
as you know the human understanding is more accurate towards the designing towards the picturization of the uh, any of the project so we, if we'll have the complete design or uh, a designing layout of a project we'll get the more easy understanding of your project isn't it for example we'll have the flow charts we'll have the year diagrams or any of the diagrammatic representation of your project so for that part we had given the four days for the projects the next is the e task that is the add animations to the visuals of course i told that the human mind tendency more understanding through the pictorials through the videos so we can have the more ed animation addition in that or more visual effects in that documentation so we had given the two days for that a task then the last one is the f that means we have to upload the post for the uploading for the blog for the uploading of our project we need one day so this is a small example of a project we have done the breakage of all the tasks breakage of all the modules one by one and we can have the finalization of the project so second step it says that for the critical path management we have to identify the dependencies that the tasks are dependent on on which thing for example um, i have to identify uh, in the class itself i want to identify the weak students of my class so for the identification of the weak students i have to identify the marks of the previous semester isn't it the marks scored by the students of my class what they have gained in the previous semester so for that part i have to collect the data regarding the marks isn't it so for the marks collection my next task to evaluate that which student is comes in the category of the strong student or in comes of the weak student so i need the baseline i need the base of the marks for that i need the uh, the complete data isn't it so my task 2 that means to identify the weak student will depend on the task 1 that is the collection of the data so i have to identify the dependencies of all these tasks this is one a simple example for that in a huge project in a big project there are multiple dependencies are present okay so what we will see what is identify dependency once you have a high level idea of everything that needs to be done you can start identifying task dependencies so based on your work breakdown structure determine that are dependent on one another this will help also you to identify any work that can be done in parallel with other task isn't it aisa nahi karenge hum ki humne eight task karna hai uske baad hum second task karenge uske baad hum third task karenge fir hum fourth task karenge definitely it will increase the project duration and by the increase of the project duration what will happen the cost will get increased isn't it so for that part what we have to identify we have to understand how the tasks are what are the tasks are and how they are dependent on each other so what what will happen with with that we can identify which task we can execute it parallelly so what will happen it will make our time more reduction and of course it will uh, make the cost reduced of the project fine so here is an example for that here are the task dependencies based on the example above task b is dependent on a so we'll see the previous example it says that task b is dependent on a definitely we have to write a draft for so that for that part we need to have the creation of the outline that is dependent on the task a okay similarly the task d the task c is dependent on b task c and d can run in parallel c and d run in parallel we'll see how we can see the uh, task c and d we can have the editing and creation of the final draft and of course we can design the post visuals parallelly we, we as we are having a draft of the whole project the designing can part can be done parallelly and the editing of that part can be done parallelly we are they are not dependent on each other okay task e is dependent on d task f is dependent on c d and e of course the final task which is your uploading the post it depends on the c also d also and e also that is the editable data the designing data as well as the visualization of your data fine so this is how we create a list of the dependent task which is referred to as an activity sequence which will be used to determine the critical path fine so through this we can identify which critical path we have to follow to have the project completion the third step for the critical path is the creation of a network diagram so what it says is that the next step is to turn off the work breakdown structure into a network diagram which is a flow chart displaying the chronological of activities it is just a simple network diagram having the nodes and the links connectivity between those nodes where the links to have one from the sender side to the receiver side from the start point to the ending of the point we'll see an example in the further lectures then we'll have the clear picture for that so what we have to do is that we have to create a box for each task and use the arrows to depict the task dependencies then we will have to other add the other time bound components to the network diagram until you have to generate the project schedule figured out whatever the time bound duration represent whatever the further activities we have to add on 
all that detailing should be present in the network diagram. See, the starting point is there, the ending point is there and we are having several paths to get the information completely towards the end of our project. So, we have to see what are the paths we are getting and which path is more efficient for moving for the completion of our project. Next, we have to estimate the task duration. So, for that part, we have to calculate the critical path first of all, then we have to identify the longest sequence of the critical path task. Then we have to estimate the duration of each activity. We know, for example, for the collection of our data, I had given an example for that, that I have to identify who are the strong students of my class or who are the average students of my class. So, for that part, the collection of data is the baseline for that by which I can have the analysis. So, how much time it will take for me to have the collection of my data? I can have the collection from my department, I can have the collection from the student itself or I can have the collection from the Google Forms or through the Google Sheet sharing to the world the student and there are many ways for the collection of the data. So, how much time it will take to complete this task A? That means the first task for the collection of the data. So, similarly, every task we have to declare the certain durations for completing that data. Fine. And adding all these duration, I can have the complete analysis or the complete duration for completing my project. Fine. So, it says that to estimate the duration, try making educated guesses based on the experience and the knowledge, isn't it? If we are having an experienced people working with us and they can declaration of the project completion that the project will get completed by the two years or by the three years. For example, the flyover constructions are there and the people who are working for the flyover constructions, the manager who are working for the flyover constructions, he know very well for the project completion, it may take five years or it may take six years. So, uh, of course, a guess also somewhat is uh, very well known by the identification for the critical path. Then we can have the estimation based on the previous project data. For example, I had given the same example, for the flyover construction, the people working for that, they know uh, the previous, in the same location the flyover was created, the certain issues were raised uh, the, due to the lack of some uh, uh, problems, resources allocation was uh, having certain issues. So, the project duration get extended from the five years to the six years. So, they know what is the issues creating here itself. So, on the behalf of the historical data, they can declare the duration uh, instead of the six years, they can declare as in seven years because they know the project will get extended towards the timing with the help of the previous historical data. Estimating based on the Indian standards, of course, the standards which we are following, that standards should be clearly declared on the behalf of that. What is getting affect towards the project? What are the, uh, the issues we are getting? What are the resource allocation we are getting on time or not? All these certain points should be captured and should be noted down for the identification of the critical path. Okay, alternatively try using the forward pass and the backward pass. So, what we can do is that we have to calculate the early start and the early finish dates by using the previously specified start date. It, for the each and every activity, what we have to do, we have to identify the early start and the early finish. What is early start? It is the highest early finish value from immediate predecessor where EF is ES plus the duration and the calculation starts with a zero at the early start of the first activity and proceeds through that schedule. So, for example, uh, I had given an example for the collection of the data for the students. I told uh, or I declared that, that within the five days, I will complete the collection of my data. Fine. Then I have to do the analysis of my that data or I have to do the cleaning of that data. Maybe some raw data is there, maybe some false data is there. So, for that analysis, I need five days more. 5 days for data collection, 5 days for the fault detection or the analysis of my data. That means, 10 days to complete, to have the complete data for the analysis. So, 5 days for one, 5 days for one. So, similarly, we will have an add-on of all these activities for completion of my project. So, the calculation starts, I told you that with the calculation will start with the 0 itself. Now, further we will do, we will determine the ES and EF dates which will allow for the early allocation of the resource to the project. We know that the early finish is reduced duration and we can do the allocation for the further requirements for the further uh, uh, completing of the further activities. So, this is a diagrammatic representation showing what is early start, what is early finish, what is late start and what is late finish. So, this is the activity for example, this activity name is your C activity and for completing this activity we need the expected duration is your 12. That means, for example, 12 days it will take to complete this activity. And this is the middle activity. It is, it is not the starting activity or it is not the ending activity. Previously, for the previous data, the, this activity got 15 days. The Whatever work was happening previously was the 15 days. And then what will happen is that 
uh, the, the late start timing which was done after the completion of that data is your 18 days. What we will do, we will do the addition of all these things 15 plus 12 which will be your 27. So, we will know that by adding the previous data with the current data, we can have that the duration time will be your 27. Similarly, for the late start and the late finish that means we having at the back end when we will do the backward flow of that uh, analysis, we will have the 30 and then after 30 minus 12 we will get the 18. So, backtracking also we will do, ok. We will see in the numerical for that part and we will have a more clear picture for that part. So, this is a just a simple diagrammatic representation of the forward pass. It is having certain different activities representation of the forward pass, forwardly saying it is having only the what we have declared previously. That is the early start and the early finish. Similarly, early start, early finish, early start, early finish, early start, early finish. And in the middle, the activity name is present and the duration of to complete that activity. Initially, I told you that we will take the zero value from the starting of the day that will take the zero value. So, here initially it is taking zero value. For completing this A target or the A activity, it will take the 15 days. So, 0 plus 15 is 15. This 15 will go further, sorry, the 15 will go further and it will be complete to the ith activity. ith activity will take the 12 days. 12 plus 15 is your, uh, 12 plus 15 is your 27 and similarly the processing will done happening. This is just an example for the forward pass, how the forward pass works. That means forwarding, we are doing the addition of all the activities. These are all the activities representation. The A part, the F part, the C part, the G part, the B part, the E part, the D part, H. All they are having their own duration mentioning and the previous data they are having, the previous data add on with the current data and the summing of that data and forwarding that data or the duration. Okay. Similarly, we are having a backward pass. When you have the backward analysis, it says that this is used to calculate late start or the late finish dates. LS is LF duration, whereas LF is the lowest value from the immediate successor. The calculation start with the last schedule activity and proceed backwards through the entire schedule. Now, the early and the late start and end date can be used to calculate the float or scheduling flexibility of the each task. So, whatever is the lagging we are getting, all that lags can be calculated by the backward pass and this is an example of a backward pass similarly. The topper was the forward pass. Now, we are reverting back the response. So, we can have the backward pass that means 79 minus 6 is 73. That 73 will go on to the J part. The 73 minus 6 is 67. Similarly, that flow will move on to the till the start part. That means the backward pass analysis we are doing for the checking any lags in our project. So, for identifying the calculation of the critical path, we have to do them done manually or but you can save the time by using a critical path algorithm instead. There are certain algorithms for the critical path uh, which having the whole soul uh, information in that stored and we can feed the, the baseline, we can feed, feed the inputs to that and we can have the certain complete calculations for that part. So, what are the steps for the manual calculation? We have to write down the start and end time to the next of each activity. The first activity has a start time of 0. I told you before also and the end time is the duration of the activity. So, the next activity start time is the end time of the previous activity and the end time is the start time plus the duration which I had already explained in the diagram. We will add all the durations one by one for further proceeding of that data, ok. So, do for this all the activities, not for a single activity, we have to do for all the activities for the, for the processing. Step 2, look at the end time of the last activity in the sequence to determine the duration of the entire sequence. So, at the end we will have the whole soul analysis, we will have the whole soul duration calculation and the sequence of activity with the longest duration is your critical path. So, whatever is the whole soul we are taking that means to complete that uh, project, the longest duration to complete because we have to use all the resource allocations, we have to use all the activities, we have to access all the activities. So, whatever is the longest path we are having, that longest path will be your critical path. Remember that in generally in the computers we will talk all the algorithms we are only identifying the shortest path, but in the critical path we are only identifying the longest path to complete our project. Getting my point? Okay. So, next is to calculate the float values. What is the float? Float or a slack refers to the amount of flexibility of a given task. It indicates how much the task can be delayed without impacting subsequent task or the project end date. So, for that finding the float useful is a gauging how much flexibility do the project has. Float is a resource that should be used to cover project risks 
or unexpected issues that comes up. That means when we are doing the backward pass, we're calculating the float. If any differences is coming, then we can identify for this activity, the duration was getting extended or the number of days which we have done for the allocation, it will get increased for that part. So it may help for further any issues or any, um, any lags we are getting for that, that can be done parallelly while working with a critical path. Critical tasks have zero float, which means their dates are set because at the end we have to check that we are, there should be whatever duration we have declared, it should follow that dates. And at the end, if we'll have the final analysis, we should know that the final date which we have declared should be the same date which we is we are given to the final analysis. That means the project completion date and the declared date we have declared previously should be the same. So tasks with the positive float numbers belong in the non-critical path meaning they may be delayed without affecting the project completion date. Uh, talking about for the same example, for example, uh, you are cooking an, um, an omelette. So for that part, you need uh, the eggs and you need a pan which is in hotter pan. You have to put uh, the, the beaten eggs in the pan and then you have to cook. So for completing the project of preparation of the omelette, you need all these three things. That means the egg which is beaten, you need a pan with the oil and, and you have to cook for five minutes or two minutes for completing the omelette. Now, if I'll do an add-on in that, I, I want to add certain seasonings in the omelette or I want to add um, um, some vegetables in the omelette or I can say I want to add some cheese in the omelette. These are all the extra tasks which I want to add on to complete my project. Without these non-critical tasks, I can have the completion of my uh, project that is the omelette preparation. You're getting what that is a simple example for that. For the omelette preparation, I need the eggs, I need the hotter pan and I need a cooking time for that. That means if I two minutes, I will cook. But if I not add the seasoning, if I not add the vegetables, if I not add the cheese, my project will definitely be completed. So the that are the critical tasks, that is the eggs, the pans and your duration for completing that. Okay. So calculating the float can be done with an algorithm or manually. Use the calculation from the section below to determine the total float or the free float. Thank you so much. In the next lecture, we'll discuss the numerical for the critical part. Thank you.